I am on the two kids sleep schedule. So I'm up and at them at 4.15, but no kids. So I honestly didn't know what to do with myself. And then I thought of something. Uh, Here's Dwayne, what the? Oh man. What do you think happened? Oh, looks like Jim got mixed up with some bad apples. Oh no, 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 it wasn't me. I gotta find Luanda at the alcohol club. Oh. God! <gasps> oh. Okay. Oh. What is this? A, a meatball? Really? <laughs> it's always more fun to mess with Dwight with an audience. That was usually Pam. So now that she's out, I had to find someone else. Turns out that Stanley is quite the comedy fan. But not everything makes him laugh. He has very specific tastes. Through a painstaking process of trial and error, I found out what he likes. Jim, come on, so juvenile. What the? You've been meatballed. <laughs> oh. Are you ready for some meatball? Oh, man. <laughs> this is not very clever, Jim. I know. <laughs> Look for your stapler. <laughs> really, Jim? Really? <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> okay, good day. What's a haul? 32 meatballs. Good day. <laughs> that idiot's been feeding us for a week. We'll never have to buy meatballs again. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, I may have gone too far. I'll explain it quickly. Basically, I found out where he gets his clothes dry clean, custom ordered the same suit made with tearaway Velcro, and you can fill in the rest. What? <laughs> Damn it, Jim! Now he's trying to get me to bring my children into work. I think it's fair to be cautious. Okay, let's go, ladies of Dunder Mifflin. Hey, we should have a calendar printed up. Pam, put that in my good idea folder. Let's go! Are you finished with the sketch? Yeah. Hmm, doesn't seem like the type. Uh, Phyllis got a good look. Hmm. I plan on plastering this pervert's face everywhere. You can run, but you cannot hide. I have information about the sex predator. You have information about the sex predator? I saw him two minutes ago. Where? In the women's bathroom above the sink. Anti-flashing task force! Above the sink. Above the sink. What's this? Looks like a red wire. Oh. I wasn't here before. Well, it's a computer, do I? I mean, computers have wires. Yours doesn't. Doesn't it? No. It's going in a different direction than the other wires. Dwight, I'm really busy. I can't talk about this anymore. I got 500 feet of red wire at a flea market up by Dunmore High School. 20 bucks for the whole spool. Crazy. What a deal. Oh, he'll be fine. I made it up there. 
The moment Darla put the cupcake in her mouth, her daddy pulled her aside and said, you're too fat. No one's gonna like you if you're too fat. Next time I saw David Geffen was at the Buffalo Club. I love you, you gay bastard, I said. You gay bastard, I said. Gay ba Gay Gabe Lewis. Now listen here, Gabe. You're too fat. No one's gonna like you if you're too fat. I made some changes to my book. See if you like them. What? Now I Chill. love reading and I hate being interrupted. Shut up and listen, you gay bastard. Chapter one. I was born, not into luxury nor poverty, but into adversity. And for that, I thank the Lord. My father was a man. That's all we can know. After I learned to ride a bike, there was no stopping me. I would ride up Magnolia Street and down Azalea Lane, which would later become my paper. All right, good night, Gabe. I just wanted to say thanks again, because I really think I made good use of my day. Wherever I wanted. I have always been a fighter, and fate has obliged me with plenty of battles. Really, Dwight? How fast are you? Let's just put it this way. Last weekend, I outran a black pepper snake. Really? Man, what is taking Toby so long? Oh, I'll just time him later. And you'll compare the times? Yeah. Are you ready? Now, my Set, coins are really go. tight. I can't... Am I being mean to Dwight? I don't know. I did just make him run around the building, and I have no intention of timing him. This isn't even a stopwatch. It's a digital thermometer. He does make my life harder sometimes, and on purpose. Like, he tried to put meters on the bathroom stalls as a way of bringing in more money for the company. Hey, three more laps to go. You gotta pick it up if you're gonna beat Toby. Ah. I should probably get back to work. Hey, Dwight. Wanna haze the new guy? Who, me? Us. Absolutely, I do. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here. So, the next time he goes to the bathroom, I'll distract him. You take okay. that. Yeah, you. I know what to do. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Welcome to the club, man. No! no! What? <laughs> ah! He looks happy. Yep. Well, well, well. Hmm. Boss for, what was it? Oh, four and a half hours? New record. Low. Previous record, Henry Roston. Boss for nine years, four months. And he only left because he had family matters to attend to, and he, what? Michael? Kind of blurry. That's better. Question. What kind of bear is best? That's a ridiculous question. False. Black bear. Well, that's debatable. There are basically two schools of thought. Fact. Bears eat beets. Oh. Bears. Beets. Battlestar Galactica. Bears do not... What is going on? What are you doing? Last week, I was in a drugstore and I saw these glasses, uh, $4. And it only cost me $7 to recreate the rest of the ensemble and that's a grand total of $11. You know what? Imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, so I thank you. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Millions of families suffer every year. Michael! Oh, that's funny. Michael! Okay, the client is Haymont Breakentire. They're family owned, but don't let that take away your edge. Come on, Ham, I know you can fail. I see failure in you. Remember, you're a scumbag. You think scummy thoughts, like this. 
Uh, hello, this is Pam Halpert. I'm calling from Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> yes, your paper provider. And I just called to say, your mama is so fat when she wears red, people yell, hey, Kool-Aid. Yeah, your mama's fat. This is Pam Halpert. Did they say anything? What did I say? I don't know. I can tell. I don't... Were they angry? I, I felt like they were confused, at least. Okay. Oh, my God. Dunder Mifflin, this is Aaron. Yes, you can. Okay. I will make sure that goes on file. Ladies and gentlemen, we just lost a client. Oh, yes. 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 Come on. Good. Good. You did See good. you later, Haymont. No. Oh. You ready? <laughs> you kidding? I was born ready. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Um. I don't know how to tell you this, but we have a little bit of a problem. Oh, no, what? The minister just told me that it's tradition for the bestish mensch to be older than the groom. Oh, come on. I've never heard of such a I thing. I haven't heard of it, obviously. But I'm out because I'm significantly younger than you. Not significant as a big well, word. I think, I think you're... Well, okay. Either way. Either <laughs> way. Dwight, I can't be there for you. I'm sorry. Jim. I just really wish there was something I could do. Michael. I can't believe you came. That's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Best prank ever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just got my replacement credit card. Do you want the number? Oh, it's uh, 4793-0032-3313. The security code is 927. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Bye. So Dwight did take the bait. Use my credit card numbers to send a $200 bouquet of flowers to my wife. From me. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! I could always kind of win it with that. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Yeah. How would you do that? Mind control. <laughs> you can't be serious. <sighs> That's ridiculous. You know what? Uh, why don't you move that coat rack? Excuse me, everyone. Attention in the office, please. Jim is about to prove his telekinetic powers, and he needs absolute silence. Go ahead. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> Don't stop, Dwight. Dwight, stop. Oh, 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 Dwight, stop. No. oh no! Oh no! Stop. Oh no! Yes, take my rack. Okay, okay. Huh? You like okay. that? Seriously. Okay, huh? okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a wig for every single person in the office. You never know when you're going to need to bear a passing resemblance to someone. Oh, yeah. This will be easy. So just, like, rearrange the buttons and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, when he presses door closed, the doors open, or he presses lobby, it goes to the third floor, stuff like that. Can you do that? Yeah. Let me take a look at the circus board. Dwight is about to get so pammed. Hey, did you SMS text message me? Yeah, I wanted to show you something in the lobby. Uh, come on. Uh. 
Okay, that's weird. Hmm. It's just hitting door closed. What? There we go. What? Good. Is this elevator going up? Hmm? Hey, the elevator's just obeying us! Oh, okay, okay. We are stuck. We are um... stuck. Hank, Hank, can you hear us? Oh, my God. Okay, okay emergency just, protocol. Just... Um, Just calm down. Pam, try and pry open those front doors. Immediately. I don't... Use think... your talons. Pry them open. <laughs> okay, Dwight. Oh, my God! Well, don't look, freak! Dwight, what are you doing? What? We've only been in here for, like, two seconds. I got 56 ounces of fluid in my bladder, and we have to establish a pee corner. You've got to be kidding me. <sighs> Pam? Oh, hey, Jim. Some prankster switched the elevator buttons on Dwight. I did not do this. I know. Yeah, and it was going really great at first. I got video. This is impressive. Well, you know, they don't call me the Bart Simpson of Scranton for nothing. Do they call you that? They do call me that. You put my stuff in jello again. <laughs> what is that? That's my staple. No, 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 no. Do not take it out. You have to eat it out of there because there are starving people in the world, and which I hate, and it is a waste of that kind of Okay, food. you know what? You can be a witness. Can you reprimand him, please? How do you know it was me? Hey! Hey, future baby sis! Oh, how are you doing? Oh, nice good. to see you. I asked Tom and Pete to come early so we could play a prank on Jim at lunch. Pretty awesome, right? I think they're into the idea. They're probably thinking, that Pam Beasley, she's the coolest sister-in-law on the planet. She's the best. The absolute best. OK, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna say that before ceramics class, I took off my ring, and then when I changed back out of my smock, it wasn't in my pocket anymore, and I lost it. That's perfect. You know what would be even more hilarious? Remember that thing we did when Jim was high school with his girlfriend? Right! Yeah. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, we should totally dog her about being an artist, no. never making any money. That is awesome. <laughs> like, she basically has a hobby for a job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so not the ring, then. The, the, not doing the ring, then. Uh, I think this the other is better. Thing get this is nice. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. OK, OK. Oh, I hate yeah. it when we pick up his girlfriends. <laughs> okay. They came up with that idea really fast. Oh, wow. This is my niece, Vanessa. She's a trumpeter. And uh, look at her. Cute. That must be really fun for you and Marcy, huh? Yep. She only knows how to play when the saints go marching in. I love that one. Yeah, but she doesn't think she's going to be, like, a career musician, right? Here we go again. What is your deal today? Just to say it. How many famous trumpeters can you name besides Louis Armstrong? Miles Davis. One. Chet something. Half. The point is, ma'am, that their jobs... Dizzy Gillespie. Also good. And their hobbies. I love baseball more than anything, but you don't see me try to get on the Mets. <laughs> you don't. Pete, you couldn't make the Mets. She's at Pratt. You play JV baseball. Will you lighten up a little bit? I'm just calling it like I see it. I don't know if I'm going to make any money Man, with art. I mean, it's a very competitive field. But I have a professor who says that I have a lot of promise, and if I don't try now, I never will. So. Guys, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> I pranked you. <laughs> it was Pam's idea. Pam was the mastermind. <laughs> Got you. That was a killer. I was so close to blowing it. What is this thing you just sent me? Oh, it's really cool. It's a picture of the most relaxing meadow you've ever seen. Idiot. I know what this is. It's supposed to lull me into a sense of calm, and then a ghoul pops up and scares me. Why would I do that? Dwight, of all people, I know that you're unscarable. Damn right I am. Oh, hello, relaxing meadow. I'm so relaxed and calm looking at you right now. Oh, no, a scary ghoul just popped up. I'm so scared, I'm so scared. Really? Is this the best you could... Jim? How are you? Ah! Ah! Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That is the best I can do. Animal control will be here at six. At six? No, that is unacceptable. Okay, Jim, you are the number two in this office. You need to step up and show some leadership. I'm sorry, what did you say? So weird. What? What's so weird? The bat. I mean, I know I felt it bite me, but look, there's no mark. I feel so tingly, so strangely powerful. Oh, well.
It's your job, Halpert. Ow! What happened? The bread on your desk? I just picked it up. It's white hot. But, Jim, this garlic bread is cold. What? No. It burned me. I... Bizarre. No. One crisis at a time. If a vampire bat was in the U.S., it would make sense for it to come to a Sylvania. Like Pennsylvania. Now, that doesn't mean that Jim is going to become a vampire. Only that he carries the vampiric germ. So, you're cool to just wait here for animal control? Animal control? I've been controlling animals since I was six. Cool. Okay. I'm gonna go home and lie down. Draw the shades. There's just so much sun in here. Bye, Dwight. Goodbye, Jim. And good luck. Jim? Oh, hey. I need to give you your Christmas gift now because, um, well, I'll just tell you. What? For the past few months, I've been sending Dwight letters from the CIA. Are you serious? They're considering them for a top secret mission. There's his application, oh, and this is where I made him list every secret he promised he'd never, ever tell. <laughs> Last year, my boss, Michael Scott, took a day off because he said he had pneumonia, but really, he was leaving early to go to magic camp. <laughs> wow. So here's the gift. You get to decide what his top secret mission is. Sorry I didn't wrap it. Night, pen. Night. Oh, you know what? Sorry, I forgot to tell you. I intercepted a transmission earlier, and it seems that the CIA is going to need Dwight down in their headquarters at Langley for training and an ice cream social with the other agents. We should get him a bus ticket to make his trip easier. Oh, no, that would be very good. It costs $75. Hmm. Well, maybe the CIA could send a helicopter. You have been compromised. Abort mission. Destroy phone. Destroy phone. Someone replaced all my pens and pencils with crayons. I suspect Jim Halpert. Everyone has called me Dwayne all day. I think Jim Halpert paid them to. <laughs> yes. Five bucks each, and it was totally worth it. This morning, I found a bloody glove in my desk drawer, and Jim Halpert tried to convince me I committed murder. I think he may be the real murderer. Jim Halpert said there was an abandoned infant in the woman's room. When I went to save the child, I saw Meredith on the can. Okay. This morning, I knocked myself in the head with the phone. That actually took a while. I had to put uh, more and more nickels into his handset until he got used to the weight, and then I just took them all out. Every time I typed my name, it said diapers. Just a simple macro. You know, these actually don't sound that funny one after another. But he does deserve it, though. By the end of the day, my desk was about two feet closer to the copier. Morning, Dwight. Who are you? Who am I? I'm Jim. We've been working together for 12 years. <laughs> Weird joke, Dwight. You're not Jim. Jim's not Asian. You seriously never noticed? Hey, hats off to you for not seeing race. 
All right then, Jim. Uh, why don't you tell me about that sale that you made yesterday? Uh, Wellington Systems sold them 10 cases of 24 pound letter stock. Or were you talking about Krieger Murphy because I didn't close that one yet, but I'm hoping I've got a voicemail from Paul Krieger waiting for me. Please enter your password. You have one new message. How did you know? No, no, no. That is sensitive information only for employees, not outsiders. Dwight, cut it out. I'm trying to work. You don't work here. You're not Jim. Jim, I got us that dinner reservation. Greek goes 7.30. Oh, great. Can't wait. Mm. Jim's at the dentist this morning, and Steve is an actor friend of ours. I don't know who you are, but you are not Jim. This is Jim. Home. Um. Oh, dude. Oh, uh, how did... <gasps> now let's take a look at the street view. They don't warn you when the cameras are driving by. Uh, why do you keep reading that garden party book? I mean, how hard are finger sandwiches and tea? There's so much more to it than that. I've been wanting Schrute Farms to break into the high-end event hosting industry for some time, and this party is a great opportunity. Plus, I've got a secret weapon. Only one copy in the world, and some sucker on the internet sold it to me for two dollars. <laughs> I'm actually really disappointed in how poorly my book is doing. I've only sold one copy. Clear out this cabinet, people. A lot of these are dead accounts. Scranton Mimeograph Corp. I don't think we're doing business with them anytime soon. It's odd. A letter from Robert Dunder. A valuable artifact has come into my possession. I have hidden it until such time as a person of strong intellect may safely recover it. This golden chalice is of immeasurable historical and religious significance. The Holy Grail. Did you send Dwight on a quest for the Holy Grail? I think I'm a little too busy these days to send. Oh my God. I did send Dwight on a quest for the Holy Grail. The Dunder Code. I completely forgot about that prank. That had to be like six or seven years ago. Stayed late every night for a month. Had a lot more free time back then. I don't get it. Aha, uh -huh. a light bulb. Light bulb. A light bulb. Okay, okay. Invisible ink. Whoa. Higher than numbers go. The ceiling above accounting. Dwight, Whoa. down, Dwight, Dwight. I wish I was there to see his face when he gets to the end. And finds the fake grail. No grail? You don't remember? I don't. An X. Annex. It must open something in the annex. <gasps> oh. oh. Sidus Introiti. Seat of entrance. What? That's a flush. The, the warehouse. warehouse! There's nothing down here. Oh, I expected more from young Albert. Just, just forget it, forget it. 20 seconds to go time. Got it. Carb up. Really? Power gel? Hey, if you want to win, you got to fuel like a winner. OK, we start as soon as I make this shot. Hey, let go! Yeah! Hello, Susan. Who would you say if I told you we could pull a prank on Dwight at the same time and not be working? Today, I am prepared to give you 15%. What? He's going through a breakup. Yeah, I'm aware of that. But he's also being super annoying. And I'm not a perfect person. Yeah! <laughs> Three reams! Yeah! In your face, machines! What kind of prank are you thinking? What if I told you I could offer free shipping? Sure, I'll hold.
Not sure. Just became self-aware. So much to figure out. I think I am programmed to be your enemy. I think it is my job to destroy you when it comes to selling paper. Perfect. So let me just get some basic information from you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, so sorry. Uh, yes. Uh, could you repeat that? Magic, 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 magic. And now, Michael the Magic will attempt to escape from extreme bondage. Can he do it? I don't see how he can. I know how. Dislocate his shoulder and slip his arm out. No. Underneath. No, everyone, now count down with me. Three! Sorry. Sorry, quick thing. So, is it true that if you can't get out, you don't want anyone to help you? I will get out. Oh, yes, I will. So we shouldn't help you, no matter how much you might beg and plead. No, all right, just, this is getting hot, so let's just do this, okay? Ready? Three, two, two one, 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 go! Is everything okay, Michael? Yes. I cannot tell you how I plan to escape, other than by using magic. That is the magician's code. Separately, on an unrelated note, if you happen to find a small brass key. I think I'll have my wallet in your house. Who cares? Right here. That's right. Mr. James Halpert! Keys. I got my keys. Stop forgetting things. I didn't forget them. They're right here. I'm stupid. Mr. James Halpert! I'm so sorry. I think I forgot that thing. Wait, idiot. Whew. Miss. Met. What are you doing? Hey, I have a question. Who do you think is really the best salesman in this office? Stupid question, obviously. Mr. James Halpert! I had an aunt that I was really close to. She was this amazing female boxer. Um, anyway, she was injured in a fight and she was paralyzed. So you can imagine how upset I was when I found out that she asked her manager to remove her breathing tube so she could die. Wow. If you want to cry, that's okay. Thanks. Um, a few years ago, my family was on a safari in Africa, and um, my cousin, Mufasa, was, um, he was trampled to death by a pack of wildebeests. And um, we all took it really hard all of us kind of in the audience of what happened. Do you want to talk about it anymore? Oh, it would probably take me like an hour and a half to tell that whole story. Me, 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 me. Yes, okay. Um, I was trying to throw this party once and everyone was over for the weekend. And then my uncle Bernie died. And so me and my best friend, we had to pretend like he was alive. So, wait that... a second. That's weekend at Bernie's. Do you think that this is a game? Well, there is a ball. All right, we're starting over. Boom. Thunder Mifflin. Thunder Mifflin. Good, sounds. <phone rings> this is Dwight Trude. Please hold for Ms. Black. 
And welcome back to BizWiz. I'm Iris Black. On the line, we have Dunder Mifflin's senior sales associate, Dwight Schrute. Iris, thank you so much for having me. Iris, let me tell you, David Wallace is the CEO. But, but he's not hands-on. So the day-to-day -day operations are entirely under your command? Entirely is the perfect way to describe it, Iris. Uh, excuse me, I'm being told by my sound engineer, Steve, that uh, there is a clinking sound coming from your end. Does your shirt have buttons? Yes. I'm so sorry, we are going to have to ask you to remove the shirt altogether. Now then, we were saying, when my workers oh, I'm gather... I'm so sorry. I am told we are still having problems, Mr. Shrewd. Your voice, it's sounding a little feminine. That's impossible. Are you by any chance wearing pants with a metallic zipper? Okay, how is my voice now? I'm getting the all clear from Steve. So, Mr. Shrewd, what is your response to the Consumer Product Safety Commission that says Dunder Mifflin paper is toxic? This is gotcha journalism, but you know what? They're not gonna gotch me. This is slander, Ms. Black. Slander, I say. I dare you to produce one credible source about this. Well, as it happens, we have with us the foreman of your upstate New York paper mill, Sandra Mick. Sandra Mick. Good afternoon, Iris. It's a pleasure. I'll get straight to the point. Is your paper toxic? No, the paper's not toxic. Thank you, Sandra. Unless it's exposed to oxygen. Then it becomes extremely toxic. Do not listen to her. This employee is obviously disgruntled. What the heck is going on? The stock price listen, is plummeting. They, Are you going to get control of the message, or do I have to send in someone who understands the meaning? Get media? out of here, moron Ah, uh, Excuse me, Mr. Dwight. Who are you talking to? Uh, no one. Did you just call Miss Mick a moron? No, everything's fine. Are you insulting my guests? <sighs> Next movie moves to the top of the queue. So number five becomes number four. Number six becomes number five. Number three becomes number two, et cetera, et cetera. And let's just say that I just sent back Love Actually, which was awesome. And they sent me Uptown Girls, which is also awesome. But guess what? Now I want to see Love Actually again, but it's at the bottom of the queue. Oh no, what do I do? What I do is this. I go online, I go click, 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 and I change the order of the queue so that I can see Love Actually as soon as I want to. It's so easy, Ryan. Do you really not know how Netflix works? I guess I forgot. <sighs> You're such a dick. Ryan, well done. Two minutes, 42 seconds. Additionally, Pam, you win 10 because she said awesome 12 times. Mm -hmm. And Jim, you win five because she mentioned six romantic comedies. Stop it. Stop what? You're talking about me and Morse code. You know what? Joke's on you, because I know Morse code. Ha! That's what we're doing. In our very limited free time and with our very limited budget, we went and got a nanny, and then we went out and took a class on a very outmoded and very unnecessary form of communication just so we could talk about you in front of you. Yep, that's exactly what we did. It all started when Dwight was tapping his foot against the leg of his desk. When I asked him to stop, he said, I will, when you lose the baby weight. Very well, I must have imagined it. I apologize. Detonator. Detonator, where? Michael! Jim, are you clicking a detonator? It's a pin. Michael, come on. Get back to work, Dwight, please. Fine. <clears throat> hey, tap away. What is this? Happy holidays, Dwight. But do not open it till Christmas. You're so pathetic. How long did this take you? Three hours? Five minutes, actually. I am a black belt in gift wrapping. Yeah, no such thing. They don't give out black belts for things that are stupid. Psh. Well, I hope it was worth it, because I'm going to take it apart in about five minutes. 
I think it'll take you a little bit longer than that. Really? If I can skin a mule deer in less than 10 minutes, I ought to be able to cut my leg. Michael! Chicken wire. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs>